Hi, I'm Dan Altman, founder of North Yard Analytics, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the data that we use in soccer analytics. Data are the foundation of everything we do, obviously, and the higher quality data we have, the more likely it is that we'll be able to say something interesting about the sport of soccer. Now, there are many ways of collecting data, and there are companies that supply those data as well, so I'm going to talk about a few of those. One is Opta. You may have heard of Opta. A lot of its statistics are used in the media. It's owned by a company called Perform, and it collects data from leagues all the way around the world. In each game, it typically collects between 1,500 and 2,000 events. Now, how does it do this? Well, it has three people watching matches on television screens with a certain overlay and also with a special controller that helps them to collect the data. Each of the three people has a different job. Two of them are covering one of the teams each, and they typically stick with that team throughout the season so that they get to know the players and how they move, what they typically do. And one of the people is checking the work of the two people who are following the teams. Now, this is a great way to collect data. It's a little subjective, of course, because you have humans making decisions all the time, but you're seeing a huge number of events being collected. Unfortunately, most of those events are happening on the ball. Opta really doesn't collect a lot of data about what happens off the ball. And that could be really useful, right? Because you would like to know if there's a striker who's about to take a shot, is there another player who's taking some of the defenders out of the play, for example? Well, if you want that kind of data, then you have to look at a company like Kairos or Prozone. Now, Prozone, which also collects data from a variety of leagues, installs cameras in stadiums so that they have a view of everything that's happening in the stadium and they can track the movements of the players and the ball. After the game, they can code those events using human intervention, but most of the data are collected automatically. It's hard to get your hands on these data, though, because it belongs to the stadiums and then the teams that own the stadiums and also to ProZone itself. So if you don't work for ProZone or you don't work for a team, chances are you won't be able to use ProZone data. Now you can buy Opta data, but they are quite expensive. The advantage of Opta data is that they collect those data in the same way all the way around the world. Now this is fantastic because if you develop an algorithm that helps you to evaluate players, let's say, in the French League using Opta data, then you can apply the very same algorithm to, let's say, the Greek League because the data will have exactly the same format. But let's say you can't pay for the Opta data either. Well, there are a lot of public sources of data too, websites where you can collect a lot of information about players and games. Whoscored.com is one, transfermarket.com is another, and then there are people who go out and collect data themselves. For example, watching games to see where players shoot from, what are the outcomes of those shots, how did those shots get created, encoding it themselves and putting it on their blogs or other websites. This is a great resource too, and it's fantastic to see that a lot of people are taking different approaches. But what we can say is that the more types of data that are out there, the more chances we will have to develop interesting algorithms for soccer. The problem, of course, is that none of this has really been standardized yet. And that's one of the things we're looking forward to in the future.